Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in beautiful Peckville, Pennsylvania. And I am right here with you each and every Sunday morning from 7 to 8 a.m. on Bigfoot Country to bring you, the landowner, the information you need regarding natural gas development. And I, Doug Clark, have not, do not, and will not, never, ever have, never, ever will, represent a gas or pipeline company. I represent the Pennsylvania landowner, royalty owner, for any and all oil and gas related matters, including but not limited to oil and gas lease negotiations, oil and gas lease reviews and consultations, reviews and consultations on any and all oil and gas related agreements, water line agreements, pipeline agreements. I've negotiated, worked on, consulted in pipeline agreements with over 70 different companies in Pennsylvania on behalf of the landowner. So if you have a pipeline agreement, I really encourage you to give us a call. Go to my one website. I have two websites, pagasleaseattorney.com. Great information there. Not specific advice. The show's not specific advice. The websites are not specific advice. But there's information there. Go check out pagasleaseattorney.com. And if you have a pipeline agreement or you may be getting one or you want to get information and understand pipeline agreements in that process, check out pipelineattorney.com. Free. Go check out the information. Also, each week we post a weekend show up on the websites on Monday morning. So if you can't listen in each and every Sunday or each and every weekend when the show is on, go to the website, pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com, and you can check out the show. I have been doing the show since 2010, since 2010. So there are many hours of shows on all different types of subjects and topics. So go check out the website to really encourage you get information. Again, representing clients for it. We talk all the time. I do about reviews and consultations. I can't encourage you enough. If you get an agreement, as I say, put down the pen, pick up the phone, give me a call, see about a review and consultation. It's a great first step. 570-307-0702. I do them all myself. You can do them in office or by the telephone. I do them with clients all across the country, all across the state. So check out that service. And I'm going to talk. I've got a lot of fun things here. I'm excited about today's show. But I want to talk. I'm going to give you an example on what, again, started the review and consultation. It ends up being something that's going to be extremely beneficial to the client. And I'll explain that as we go through here today. Also, of course, surface use agreements, unitization issues. I'm going to talk today, some probably towards the end of the show, about the shut-in wells in Tioga County. We, as you hear me say, we got to stop it, and we've been having some successes in getting some leases terminated. So you can do two things. You can keep sitting there being upset and frustrated, or you can find out, do you have rights? Do you have a claim to say that your lease is over, and you can get out from under this old lease from the early 2000s, mid-2000s? We got to take action. Nothing's going to change if you just sit there. You need to take action and find out, is this a case where you can have your lease terminated? So let's get that information. So stay tuned because I'm going to talk more about that later. But we can't let this continue. And again, having some successes with some of these leases. So you may be in that group. We may be able to do something, maybe not. But let's find out. So you're not just sitting there year after year after year getting these shut-in checks. And before, in case I, well, I'm going to talk about it later. But again, if you're in that situation and you think, hey, I've been shut in year after year and I keep getting these yearly shut-in payments at $5 an acre, $1 an acre, whatever that amount is, and you think you may have an issue, listen real close. Do not, do not cash that shut in check that you receive sit on it pick up the phone give us a call and see 
if you have a claim to say my lease is terminated because what happens is when you fi or when you cash that shut in check the company's going to say that you here comes the r word ratified the lease you mean you said hey i must have a valid lease cuz i'm taking your money so the company says hey you can't take our money and then say you don't have a lease so even if you cash the check we'll talk more about this later but i just want to say if you think you may have an issue with your lease, if you've been shut in for eight years or more and you're getting a shut-in check or it's your eighth year, put the check down, do not cash it, pick up the phone, 570-307-0702. Let's see if we can help you. Let me see if I can help you. And keep listening to All Things Marcellus each and every week at this time on this station with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. So let's get right into it here. What I want to talk, you know, I said about a review and consultation, do them all the time. I can't say enough about them. Just real quick, if you have a multi-unit well consent form, and if you have one, those words will be familiar. If you're saying, what the heck is he talking about? Just in the back of your mind, keep these words in the back of your mind. Multi-unit well consent. And then if you get something that called a multi-unit well consent request or forms in the mail or somebody gives them to you remember hey that doug clark was talking about multi-unit well consents put down the pen pick up the phone see what your rights are understand it understand your rights as always from somebody working for you not the landman working for the company, somebody working for you. Quick side note, quick side note, just in this past two weeks, did a review and consultation with the client. Company says, we have the right to run this pipeline across your property, and we're going to give you, we'll say, $20 a foot. I look at this, I said, I don't have the right to do that in my opinion. So I write to company, say, hey, do you guys, uh, can you, do you have the right to do this under the lease? Playing dumb a bit. And what do they say? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So we write back and say, well, you know, pursuant to the lease and referencing lease parts, you don't have the right to do this. So we want to make sure you understand that because we're not going to agree. The client's not going to agree in this case to $20. So what happens? Well, yeah, maybe we don't have the Well, wait a second. You told the landowner you had the right to do it. You told me you had the right to do it. Well, remember how I say this often. Anybody can say anything. Doesn't make it true. Oh, yes, landowner. We have the right to do it. Here's my pen. We're going to give you free money. No. Just because they say that doesn't mean it's true and in fact you know it was very interesting in this case because i knew that they didn't have the right to do what they wanted to do so i asked a question to see how they would respond to the question and it took a long time for them to respond i could just see the wheels turning inside the company how do we respond to this maybe he's on to us but maybe maybe he's not that bright maybe we can tell him we have the right generically and he won't understand it, and he'll just go along with the flow. Well, that's not what happened. <laughs> that's not what happened. Maybe some lawyers who don't deal with this all the time and don't understand all the intricacies and the rights and the leverage points might have just said, okay. But no, no, no. We identify it and say, you know, guys, uh, sorry, but we disagree. And so what's going to happen now? Well, it looks like Let's just say, uh, hypothetically, that the compensation will increase substantially and the rights that are given will be reduced substantially. So here's what I mean. The compensation may go up three, four, five times what was offered. Three, four, five times. Then, on top of that, what was offered were these unlimited rights to run pipelines, any type of pipeline, now, future, the water lines that carry produced or flow back water, electric lines, surface lines, you name it, forever was going to be granted. Now, no. We're going to define 
let's say one gas line, one water line, no surface lines, no electric lines. Here's how you're going to pay. Here's where the lines are going to be located. So all of that starts. All of it starts with a review and consultation, which took from beginning to end less than two hours. And we identify all the different leverage points. And from there, then we say, hey, look, you really do have some leverage, it looks like. How do you want to handle it? Or, hey, look, you know, unfortunately, in this case, there's not a lot of leverage. Here's what we think. Here's what I think you can do. And then you decide what to do going forward. So sometimes the review and consultation in the worst case scenario, I say this all the time, the worst case scenario for a review and consultation, you get your questions answered. I tell you what you need to know from the landowner's side. Somebody who wants to make sure that you're informed with what you need to know. And you then also find out that you're doing and getting the best possible agreement in your particular situation. Or you can decide, hey, you know what? I may want to wait. I don't want to do this or I'm going to go forward. But the worst thing that can happen is you spend two hours of time and you become informed and you have your answers or your questions, excuse me, answered by somebody who is working for you, who does this all the time. This is what I do to make sure you're getting the information you need, to make sure you're getting the best possible deal and to make sure you understand your leverage and you're not leaving anything on the table. Because I'm telling you, I see it all the time. People are leaving hundreds routinely routinely hundreds of thousands of dollars either immediately within the next year or two or throughout the lifetime of their lease and in cases and i'm not talking like one in many cases they're leaving millions of dollars on the table because they're just signing if you do a review and consultation you will not leave millions of dollars on the table. You will not leave hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table. You will know what leverage you have and how to use it and how to move forward. And those are your decisions. You'll know, am I getting snookered, taken advantage of, ran over the coals, whatever terms we want to use. You'll know is this a fair and appropriate deal? And you'll have your questions answered. That's the worst thing that can happen in the review and consultation. So that's why I really encourage people. We get outstanding feedback. And again, I'm going to tell another story, which is going to be also as a result of review and consultation, but it's going to also be very uh, informative and provide an education on royalty language. And then we're going to talk about some shut-in as we go forward. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. Make sure people aren't going there enough for information. Go to the websites. If you cannot listen to the show when it is on, go to the websites. We post each week's radio show on the websites. Take advantage of that. You can go, and I know we have some people, probably somebody right now, working out, exercising, listening to the show. So keep going. Keep going. Push it. Push it. But seriously, you can listen to the show anytime. If you go to pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com, it will be up there each and every week after it airs on that weekend. So make sure you're checking out the websites and get information there. As always, the websites and the radio shows are general information, not specific, but they'll get you thinking, they'll get you informed, and give you a base to realize what you need to do is get specific information about your specific situation. And you do that with reviews, consultations, and representation. So you can give us a call, 570-307-0702. All right, I'm going to wrap up this first segment. So when I get into the next segment, I'm going to talk again 
This is going to be just an example of a review and consultation as to how things started and then how things ended, and we're just going to focus on the royalty provision. Now, I could do these type of shows for the next year about reviews and consultations that went from the client being offered 20000 to receiving 100 being offered 50 to receiving 250 I could sit there and do these all day for a while saying what was offered and where you go to. And, you know, without doing that, let me just stress again, think about this, guys. If you have a document, don't you owe it to yourself? And look, if you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for your family and future generations. But to make sure that you're maximizing the lease, the royalty calculation, which will apply for decades, decades, maybe even a century, maybe, but certainly decades if there's gas production. So let's get this information. The, the information has become extremely specialized and the royalty language has become much more complicated and loopholes and adjusting language to comply and to take advantage of the existing laws. So we need to be aware of that and we need to make sure that we're defending against it or at minimum, if we can't stop something, we need to be aware of it and decide fully informed do I want to move forward under these terms and conditions? So I'm going to talk about a review and consultation that led to a great royalty change. And also, it's going to hit on all of these big royalty concepts that I talk about often, but it'll be done in a little different way. So I'll be right back. Stay tuned. Remember, these commercials are really important. So don't leave during a commercial. I hear they're really informative, really important. Check it out and keep listening each and every week to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Again, make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station for the information you need regarding natural gas development. I, Doug Clark, have not, do not, and will not, never have, never will, work for an oil or gas company. I represent the Pennsylvania landowner and oil and gas right owner. So I want to talk about now. Starts with a review and consultation. I know it's a broken record, but boy, I'll tell you, you know, when you find something that works, when you know that there's a service that's doing great things for a lot of people, then I have to talk about it. I have to talk about it because people that do the review and consultations, I've never had anyone yet say, what the heck did I do that for? I've had people say, oh my heavens, I'm so glad I've done this. I've had people say, wow, that was so unbelievably informative. I am telling you, if you have any agreement, pick up the phone, put down the pen, do a review and consultation. They usually take two hours or less, and it's done an hourly rate. So you can find out, worst case, your questions are answered and you know you're not getting a bad deal. Best case, you find out you have way more leverage than you ever imagined, and you get a path to figure out how to use that leverage to maximize your situation, which may result in tens of thousands of more dollars, hundreds of thousands of more dollars, and sometimes over the life of a lease, for example, millions of more dollars. And it can start with the review and consultation. And I hate how it sounds commercial, but you know, I don't care. I care. I should take it back. I care. I care. I don't like that it sounds commercial. But with that said, I am compelled to keep saying this because it has been such a great thing for the clients. And of course, look, it's self-serving. I love doing it. I get paid to do it. But I get to talk to landowners and explain to them what they have and give them the information no one else is giving them. And it's not about no, 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 or negative. It's about identifying leverage points, identifying what the market is in this region, and saying, hey, this is a good deal. It's a bad deal. Here's why it's good. Here's why it's bad. Let me answer this question, that question. Here's where you have leverage points. Here's where your options are. Here's the type of pathway that you could go moving forward, and you decide how you want to do it. If you have an agreement, and you're just listening to the landman, who, by the way, 
works for the company and not you, the landowner. Not you. Doesn't work for you. Their business card doesn't say your name on it. Doesn't say representing so-and-so landowner. Doesn't say that. They don't represent you. They don't represent you. Think about this. Historically, are there a bunch of people saying, wow, I'm so glad that landman helped me out so much with my first lease. I got such a great deal. Is that your experience? Maybe it is. It's not what I hear very often. It's not what I hear very often. So, as they say, fool me once. Let's, well, I won't even go. Let's not get fooled again. And I don't care, fool me once, fool me twice, fool me three times. Let's stop being fooled. Let's stop signing bad agreements. Do a review and consultation. Find out what you have. Find out what your rights are and find out how you can handle that going forward and what is the best path and develop a strategy to, as I say, maximize your situation for both today and for years and decades and generations, kids, grandkids, into the future. We owe it to them. These are unique opportunities in many cases. You have to maximize your opportunity. And in my opinion, the company obviously doesn't want you to maximize your situation. It's an adversarial process. They want to maximize their benefit, not yours. You can't forget that. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. So here we go. We got a smart guy says, hey, I listened to that Doug Clark on the radio, got a gas lease offer. So the landman tells me I have no deductions. So I like this lease offer. Landman says no deductions. Hey, I better stop. Wait a second. I hear that guy in the radio show. He says you do a review consultation, typically takes two hours or less. You know, I'm ready to sign this landman. Landman, yeah, I know he works for the company, but the landman tells me this is no deductions, and he's right here in front of me telling me there's no deductions here. So I should sign it. Well, you know what? I'm going to call that guy. He says it's only like two hours. Let me find out. You know, let me see if this is worth it. So calls up my office, sets up a review and consultation, sends me in the gas lease and the addendum and everything he's offered. I study and review that. I'm familiar with this area, as I am in most areas. I'm familiar with this language, as I am with most language. And I look forward to our call, and I have my agenda for the call. So we get on the phone. We do a call. This person lives far away. We do this by telephone in this example. So during the call, I explain what this person needs to know about the oil and gas lease that they're offered. I explain to them what they may think is going to occur, but in reality, what will occur, and in some cases, what probably is going to occur. So in this one, and look, it's not always just the royalty. There's many other issues that come up, but royalty is a really big one. It is an enormous issue. If you have a provision that is going to reduce your royalties over the life of the lease by 30% or more, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. So that's what we're going to focus on here now. And that was the big part of this conversation. So many, many times, here's what happens. Many times the client landowner says to me at the beginning of the call, hey, you know, I got royalty without deductions. I'm all excited. I got royalty without deductions. That's the big thing. I just want you to look at this. So I say, listen, let me explain. You don't really, in the way you're thinking, have royalties without deductions. Now I'm going to explain this process to you. And I know that you think you have royalties without deductions. I know that the land man has told you the land man works for the company, not you, the landowner. They told you that you have royalty without deduction. You read the language and it says without deduction. So, you know, it's the old, <laughs> If it looks like a duck, it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, doesn't mean this thing's necessarily a duck. It doesn't happen very often. Usually it's a duck. Usually it is. But in these cases, it's not. And here's the deal. So 
again in this review and consultation, I look, and this guy's royalty language in this lease printed it out. <laughs> so I'm going to read every single part of it. I'm going to read the important parts. So this is what was offered. Guy says, hey, this is awesome. I got no deductions. Royalties, here's the language, shall be paid on all oil and gas substances produced and sold without deduction for the cost of producing. They can't deduct those anyway, by the way. Okay, but without deduction for producing, gathering, storing, separating, treating, dehydrating, compressing, transporting. Those are the big ones we're looking for. Uh oh, wait parentheses now, except as allowed here and after. So, oh, wait a second. <laughs> says here, royalties without deduction, says treating, processing, producing, transporting, gathering, all the different things we like. But then it says, except as allowed here and after. But it says, let me back up, because this stuff is so important. This is royalties without deduction for, again, producing, gathering, transporting, compressing, except is allowed hereafter, and then it says, or otherwise making the oil and gas produced from the property ready for sale or use. If there is one thing that I hope that everybody keeps in their head, it is this phrase, ready for sale or use. So they say to you, no deductions for transporting the gas in a pipeline, for example, until the gas is ready to be sold or used. Again, that is a location element. Where is the gas physically located? Where is the gas physically located at the moment in time? where that gas is ready to be sold to another person or entity or used, that they could use the gas. Where is it located? Because what this says is we will not charge any deductions, pipeline transportation fees until the gas is ready for sale or use. So after after that moment in time, when the gas is actually ready to be sold or used, after that point in time, wherever that gas is located, after that time, you have to pay transportation, share in transportation, and all of these different fees, post-production costs, compression, transportation, dehydration, gathering. So if Gas is immediately ready to be sold or used at the well site. That means that you share in all of those costs to pipe that gas away from the well site, which means if the gas is sold at the interstate pipeline for $2 and it costs $1 in fees to get it from the well site to the $2 point, well, what's your royalty going to be calculated and your share is a dollar? They're going to take two dollars because that was the sell price. They're going to minus one dollar in transportation, dehydration, compression, and gathering fees. And you're going to get royalty based on dollar valued or gas valued at one dollar. One dollar. So when you see ready for sale or use, that is buzz language. You need to be aware of that. When they're telling you this is royalty without deduction, your response should be, yeah, it's royalty without deduction until the moment this gas is ready for sale or use. So you tell me, land man who works for the company, not me, the landowner, you tell me, when is gas ready to be sold or used? Where is that gas located? Is it located at the well site? Because if it is, boy, you're tricking me, aren't you? Or is it ready to be sold or used when it gets to the first interstate pipeline, the big main pipeline? Is that the point? And if they tell you 
that it's not ready to be sold or used until it gets to the interstate pipeline, then what do you think your response is? All right. Well, then let's just add that sentence to the addendum so there's no confusion. If you're telling me, if you're honestly telling me that I'm going to have royalty without deduction until the gas gets to the interstate pipeline, if that's how this is to be calculated, then why would you as a company reject the request to just clarify that? Why do you want to leave in there ready for sale or use? When you know dang well that the majority of companies out there say that gas in the northern part of Pennsylvania is immediately ready to be sold or used. Immediately. Immediately. So, if you are a good company, if you are a good actor, and maybe you are, and I've been able to get people to change on these arguments, companies to change, then... You would do the right thing because you're telling us that's what you mean. So write it down, please. Like, again, if we're all on the same page, we're all being fair and we're all being upfront. These aren't issues. But if you're being sneaky, if you're being sneaky, you're not going to want to put in that language because you know you have a loophole as a company written right into this contract. So you can say technically, well, there's no deductions until the gas is ready for sale or use, but you're not telling the landowner that you're immediately, immediately identifying that gas as being ready for sale or use at the well head. And you're not telling people that. You're not. You're telling them that it means no deductions. And if you mean that, then let's clarify that language. And I'm going to tell you, this stuff does fire me up because, look, Everybody who I represent, again, I say it, but it's just true. I grew up with right is right. You know, my dad worked in the mill. It's just what it is. Right is right. You treat people right. You're honest with people. And that's how you deal with people. So I get extremely upset when they're telling people like my parents, like my grandparents, like the neighbors I grew up with, and like the clients that I represent of all different ages, when they're telling them, oh, this means that. When I know dang well that this company is treating this a different fashion, I know dang well. I see it every day. So, yeah, I get fired up on that. And so, again, in reviews and consultations, I sure as heck can tell you we talk about all of these things. So let me reset. Let me reset. I may have to pop another blood pressure pill at the break. Let me reset. So here we go. So we start, do the review and consultation. Uh, this happens so many times. The client is all excited because they have what they're told to be royalty without deduction. So I just said it has this ready for sale or use requirement. This is what it's originally offered, but there's more, more. You guys say, remember ready for sale or use. Here's another word that should like burn it in your mind, write it on your hand. If you're going to, if you're going to meet with a land man, write these two phrases on your hand, ready for sale or use enhancement, write those two phrases down because or even, well, make it three. Let's write marketable, marketable, M-A-R-K-E-T-A-B-L-E. Write those three phrases down because they're trick phrases. So, goes on, this royalty provision offered that we review in the uh, lease review and consultation service. Goes on to state, royalty provision, goes on to state, however, any such costs which result in enhancing the value of marketable gas to receive a better price may be deducted. Well, look at your hand. We wrote down marketable. We wrote down enhancement, flash red signs, flash red lights. This is bad. Ready for sell or use combined with, talk about making it clear what they're gonna do. Most companies will just say, ready for sale or use and still take what we consider to be deductions, this company, hey, give them some credit. They're saying, look, we're even going to make this so abundantly clear, but we know it's clear if you deal with this all the time, but if you're a landowner, it's not going to be clear at all. It says that if they enhance the value of marketable gas, that can be deducted. Well, what does that mean? Again, Ready for sale or use? Where is the gas located when it is declared ready to be sold or to be used? 
and most companies are going to say at the wellhead. So what they're also what they're saying then is if it's at the wellhead ready to be sold, it's in a marketable condition. It's ready to be marketed. It's ready to be sold. It's ready to be used. So they even go one step further. One step further to say, "Oh, not only is there no deductions before ready for use, sell or use, but there are after." But it goes on and says that any cost which result in enhancing the value of marketable gas can be deducted. Well, what does that mean? It means that you are going to be charged the pipeline transportation fees from the wellhead to the point where that gas is sold. That's what it means in almost all cases, in the vast majority, and I think eventually in all cases. So again, the language says ready to be sold or used. Then it goes and says, once the gas is marketable, we're even clarifying this more for you guys, but it's still tricky language that most people are never going to understand unless you deal with it all the time. So they're saying, once the gas is ready to be sold or used, we can start charging you the pipeline charges. And what they say then too is, once the gas is marketable, same thing, we can charge you those charges. So these are all telltale signs that your royalty is going to be calculated at wellhead price. And I can't say this enough, guys. We do not, not, not want wellhead price. We want the price as far away from the wellhead as possible. We do not want wellhead price. We want the price going into our house as far away as possible. So... These are telltale signs you're getting wellhead price. So I'm going to now, we're coming up against the break. I'm going to explain. We go through this. I point these things out to the client in more specificity and detail for their case. And then, thankfully, this is a company I've dealt with. This is a company we've been fighting with. And I know that in this case, well, I believe strongly I can do better. And I'm going to explain what we were able to do when I get back after this next break. You are listening. To all things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station for all things Marcellus. And put down the pen, pick up the phone, give us a call. Reviews, consultations, royalties, shut-ins, unitization, multi-unit well consent, any and all oil and gas related matter. Give us a call, 570 570- 307-0702, regardless of location, 570-307-0702. I really want to help you. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. <laughs> Good news, took another blood pressure pill. Bad news, I don't think it's going to kick in in time, but I don't care. Let's keep rocking here. So let me quickly reset. Landowner calls. This happens often. Hey, I got royalty without deduction. I want to do a review and consultation. Sends in the lease. I review the lease. I'm ready for the call. I understand everything about the lease. I'm looking forward to this call to explain the client where the problem is on royalty without deduction, answer the questions, everything else, and how we may be able to improve this lease and give guidance and answer questions. So we do the review and consultation. Landowner, again, is all excited. They have royalty, they believe, without deductions. Landman told him that. Headline says that in the lease or in the addendum. And he sees language that says, without deduction. However, without going back over this all, we know that that's not always the case. And we know there are plenty of loopholes. And we know the companies are smart. And they have smart lawyers. You should too. So they have in the lease that there are no deductions until the gas is ready to be sold or used. Then it also even goes one step further and says that once the gas is marketable, which again, if it's ready to be sold or used, it would be marketable at that point. So if that's at the wellhead, it's saying anything we do as a company to enhance the value of marketable gas can be deducted. What does this all mean? It means that if the gas is sold away from the wellhead, they're going to deduct those charges in almost all cases, and you're going to get post-production cost deducted, even though you didn't think so, even though somebody told you you wouldn't, even though the heading says no deductions, because the key is 
the words underneath. And so the loophole is there's no deductions until the gas is ready to be sold or used. So the landman can say that to you. Yeah, this is a no deduction lease. No deductions until the gas is ready to be sold or used. However, the gas is immediately ready to be sold or used. The moment, the instant, the millisecond that it comes out of the ground, it is ready to be sold or used. So therefore, they say, we are technically correct. We didn't deduct any expenses before the gas was ready to be sold or used. It just so happens that the gas was instantly ready to be sold or used. So now, from that millisecond that it comes out of the ground, any costs, transportation and pipelines, compression, dehydration, any cost that we as a company incur after the millisecond that the gas came out of the ground, you share in those. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we call deductions. That's what we call deductions. And they say, no, you have a no deduction lease because there's no deductions until the gas is ready to be sold or used. But again, you listen to the show. You're going to say, land man, who works for the company, not me, the landowner, when is gas ready for sale or use? Then, if you really pay attention, you're going to say, what does this mean that it says in here that any costs which enhance the value of marketable gas, any cost that enhance that value can be deducted. What type of cost are those going to be? And then just sit back and watch. Just sit back and watch and enjoy whatever answer that's going to be. And I will bet you that that answer is not well, landowner, even though I work for the company and not you, the landowner, I'm going to give you this thing really, really straight. Almost certainly your gas will be immediately ready to be sold or used. It will be immediately marketable, which means then that whatever price we sell it at, we will deduct all pipeline fees, transportation, compression, gathering, dehydration, any other fee that we incur from the moment it came out of the ground until we sell it. And that's how we're going to calculate your gas because it is immediately ready for sell or use. And by us transporting it through pipelines and paying those costs and expenses, we are enhancing the value of marketable gas. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that in my opinion would be a very true and appropriate response. Ask those questions and see what answer you get. And if they say that you are to have no deductions, then we say, well, you know what? Let's clarify that a bit. Let's make the words on the paper match the words coming out of your mouth. Let's put on paper what is coming out of your mouth because what's coming out of your mouth right now isn't on paper. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus and make sure that you're putting down the pen and picking up the phone. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. If you have any oil and gas-related matter, agreement, whatever the case may be, start at least with the review and consultation. we got to stop this stuff. And it's not, in many cases, it's easy to stop. So that's why I talk about it so much. Okay, so what do we do here? So I tell the client, hey, this is the deal. Now... Maybe, maybe we can't change it, but now you know about it. Maybe, or maybe this is what we can do. Let's take this case. Maybe this is what we can do. I talk to the company. I say, you know, what does this mean? And they give me, oh yeah, you know, we're going to, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. And I said, well, you know, it doesn't say that. And in fact, this language that you've presented that says no deductions allows you to pay the landowner the wellhead price. Oh, and by the way, your lease also allows you to sell the gas to a company that you own. 
an affiliated company at potentially a reduced price and pay royalty on that reduced price. So you have a cornucopia of loopholes here. And what I'd like to do is close some of them. And since you're telling me that, again, you your intention is for no deductions, then I have some language that will actually do, again, I have words that we can put on paper that will match the words that are coming out of your mouth. So let's talk about that. So in this case, in this case, what were we able to do? We were able to say that the royalties would be without deduction. Going on to state that, that the oil and gas production shall be delivered free of cost into the pipeline for oil, but now listen to this one, and into the first interstate pipeline for gas, meaning that you company tell us that you're not going to charge deductions until the gas hits from the well site. It'll go through pipelines and eventually get to an interstate pipeline, to a hub point where it may be sold, often sold. You're now saying in this agreement where before ready for sell or use enhancement. No, 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 no. Now we say that gas production shall be free of cost into the interstate pipeline. Then we go on to state that for gas sold from the leased premises, meaning the property, shall receive royalty at, we'll say, I'll say 15% in this case, of the sales proceeds actually received by the company from the sale of the gas production itself, meaning that your royalty is going to be based upon the proceeds that your gas is sold at. And you're getting it free, no deductions until you get to the interstate pipeline. Not the well site, the interstate pipeline. Then it goes on. Remember we talked about affiliated sales? We're able to negotiate and add on to this, which all started in a review and consultation call. That... The proceeds from the sale of the gas production shall be calculated based upon an arm's length sale to unaffiliated parties. That if the company sells the gas to an affiliated company that they own, then your royalties are going to be paid based on the greater of the price between what the affiliate paid the parent company or... And this is the nice one, the price obtained by the affiliate when they went out and sold that gas to a real unrelated third party. So think about it. Landowner thinks coming in because they've been told you have a lease without deductions. They read some of the language, seems to make sense. But the landowner says, Two hours or less, I can do this review and consultation, make sure I'm not getting taken advantage of. Calls my office, 570-307-0702. We do review, consultation, I explain everything, explain that maybe we can do these changes. Says, hey, let's go ahead and try to do it. We're able to do it. Now the person has a no deduction lease to the interstate pipeline, which probably adds, and there's, we'll say at least, well, adds significant value to this lease over the lifetime of the lease, significant value. Then we say affiliated sales can't set the price unless that price is higher than what the gas is actually sold for. And let me tell you, that won't ever happen. So if you sell the gas to an affiliated company, you can't use that price. We follow the gas that the affili affiliated company bought and whatever they sell it at, that's how your royalty gets calculated. That is significantly different, and it is significantly better. Significantly, significantly, significantly. So, started with a review and consultation and ended with something significantly different. And this was a lot of property, and it's going to generate a lot of royalty based upon what we've seen in this area. Again, it's possible maybe it doesn't generate any, but if it does, this is going to be a substantial improvement and it started with the review and consultation call we've never had that landowner would have signed and never have known the difference we have to stop signing 
put down the pen, pick up the phone, 570-307-0702, 570-307-0702. Keep listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I got a short segment here, so I'm going to jump right into it. I'm going to dedicate this segment again, short segment, Tioga County land owners. If you are shut in, if your well is shut in for eight years or more, starting this year, if you've now been shut in for eight years and you have a hundred acres or more and you have complete ownership of your property, I will do in that scenario a completely free review and consultation and give you my opinion whether you have a claim to terminate your gas lease and discuss then if that's something that makes sense for you and you can decide how to handle it. But I want to be clear here. You have to have, in order to do for me to do this free evaluation, you need at least 100 acres you need to be shut in for at least eight years or more, and you have to own all of the property, meaning somebody else can have a lease on it, which may be a different type of lease than yours. Or if they do, then we have to do them all together. So again, one more time, if you are out there, this is free, there is no obligation, I'll tell you what I think, and then you can just move on and do nothing, or you can take action if it's something that we feel and you feel makes sense to take action. But it is a free 100% free review consultation for anybody who has been shut in, especially these vertical wells in Tioga County, you've been shut in for eight years or more. I want to hear from you, 100 acres. I will do a free review consultation evaluation. Also, if you are shut in for eight years or more and you have a well pad on the property, I'd like to hear from you too. Now, let me say, if you have, if you're not in that scenario, you have less acres, you've been shut in for a long time, you know, we can still talk about reviews, consultations, do you have a claim, but in order to do a free evaluation for me to go ahead and take, and it's, you know, it just takes time and I have to look at all of these things. And if I did free on everything, it's all I do. So I really want to stop this. We've had some successes. We have had some successes in these leases and making claims that these leases have terminated. And if we didn't do this, those people would, if I didn't do this and the people didn't do it, they would still be sitting there under lease. So I can't stress it enough. I want to hear from you. We need to stop this. And I believe that there are many leases out there that have terminated, that have actually terminated. But if you don't do anything about it, they're going to stay recorded on your title. And then once gas starts producing and if you take checks, then you're probably ratified it and you're stuck. You're stuck at 12.5%. You're stuck at full deductions. You're stuck at whatever the current terms are in your agreement. You're stuck. We got to stop it. You get no other bonus. So I want to hear from you guys. I want to stop this. You hear me talk about this issue all the time. We need to stop it. Also, if you get a shut-in check and you think you've been shut in too long, don't cash it. Call the office, 570-307-0702. See if I can help you. So again, I want to hear from anybody who's in that situation. 570-307-0702. We have to stop this, and we've been having successes. So okay, I'm up against it here. Short final segment. Remember, keep listening. All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm, each and every week at this time on this station. Stop signing bad agreements. Put down the pen. Pick up the phone. Give me a call. 570-307-0702. The landman works for the company, not you, the landowner. I have not, do not, will not represent gas companies. Have a great, great week, everyone. See you next week.